This is Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society. We will now continue our examination of the origins of writing with a modern theory that tries to explain the origins of how writing came to be as a language technology. This is token theory. An earlier theory on the origins of writing as a language technology was first proposed by William Warburton, an 18th century English scholar. According to pictographic theory, pictures, such as those of animals, gradually took on a denotational significance beyond that of the thing depicted. Pictographic theory, as, an, as a theory of language writing origin, went essentially unchallenged until the mid-20th century. In the mid-20th century, a new theory, token theory, was first proposed by Leo Oppenheim, an Austrian-American Assyriologist at the University of Chicago. In subsequent years, the theory was further developed by Denise Schmant Messerat, a French-American archaeologist at the University of Texas at Austin. In the presentation that follows, we will be following closely with material presented by Schmant Besserat in her article, From Accounting to Writing, at the URL shown here. In From Accounting to Writing, Schmant Besserat succinctly presents the theory of tokens in the development of writing in ancient Mesopotamia. We will begin this examination with an examination of accounting in ancient Mesopotamia, specifically accounting with tokens. We will start with a look at an early Mesopotamian technology, accounting tokens. In From Accounting to Writing, Schmant Besserat presents a photograph depicting a collection of small three-dimensional tokens from Jarmo, Iraq, circa 6500 BC. Each token in the collection originally represented a unit of some physical commodity. The picture depicts three small cones, which collectively would have represented three small measures of barley, a grain. Each cone represented one small measure of barley. Other early tokens depicted in the photograph include spheres and disks. Each sphere represented a larger measure of barley. Each disk represented one sheep. Take a close look, if you can, at the round disk in that image. It represented one sheep. We'll come back later and look more closely at that particular token. As time passed, cities developed in ancient Mesopotamia, and by the year 3350 BC, 300 types of tokens were known to exist, each representing a different type of good. A sheep, a unit of good, a unit of some other kind of good. In using these tokens, the tokens represented physical commodities, either an item or a unit of measure. This required keeping a collection of items around to account for them. So when performing accounting, it was necessary to actually have these physical commodities. One problem then that arose is how to best keep track of debts and other things that needed accounting. Over the time period 3350 to 3100 BC, a new development occurred, 
specifically using clay containers called envelopes to store collections of tokens. The tokens collected together could be stored inside this clay container called an envelope. But then a problem arose. What if you need to know how many symbols and how much how many types of each token are inside the envelope? The only obvious way to do this is to break the envelope open and see what's inside. In many cases, this is not ideal. So the question uh, arose then, how do you know what's inside? The innovative solution was found in the tokens themselves. As the clay envelope was formed, while the clay was still soft, each individual token was depressed into the soft clay. The end result was that the container, the clay envelope, had an outside that could be read. The outside of the clay envelope contained three-dimensional impressions of each token that was held inside the envelope. So by the end result was that by looking at the outside of the envelope, one could tell immediately what was inside. This was a major development. As this system of using impressions on clay envelopes became more widespread, it was eventually realized that the same could be done without using the envelope as a container. Instead of physically collecting tokens inside a clay envelope and then using the tokens to impress on the outside of the clay envelope, one could simply create a ta clay tablet and create impressions in the clay tablet. The clay tablet itself, with these impressions in it, could then be used for accounting purposes without the need for the physical tokens themselves. Let's look at a particular example. Let's say that we had two large measures of barley and three small measures of barley. Recall from before that a large measure of barley can be represented by a sphere token, and a small measure of barley can be represented by a cone token. So if we start with a blank clay tablet and take one sphere token and depress it twice into the clay tablet, and take a cone token and depress it three times into the same tablet, the end result will be a clay tablet with two circular and three, uh, three other depressions that we can interpret as representing two large measures of barley and three small measures of barley. Thus, we went from a three-dimensional storage system used for accounting and now have a two-dimensional writing system used for accounting. The next important development came in the 31st century BC in sizing with a stylus. Now that the technique had been developed to take a clay tablet and impress shapes in it to represent tokens, the next development was obliviating the need for the tokens themselves in creating the clay inscribed clay tablet. Instead of using the tokens to create the shapes in the depressions in the clay tablet, a stylus was used to create the depressions in the clay. The original token shapes were depressed to represent the original items 
that the tokens themselves originally represented. And in addition, new signs were developed not based on tokens. Among the most important new signs that were developed were symbols for numbers. Here we see symbols for the numbers 1, 10, 60, 600, and 3,600. This was also a major new development. In this way, accounting could be done by writing a number followed by the symbol. So instead of depressing 10 sheep tokens, you could inscribe using the stylus the symbol for the number 10 and then the symbol for sheep. Now it's time to revisit the sheep token that we talked about before. Recall that the sheep symbol in Sumerian was problematic for the pictographic theory of language origin. The sheep symbol in Sumerian for the word sheep was a circle with a plus or cross sign inscribed inside it. This was problematic for the pictographic theory because this symbol has no apparent relation to a drawing of a sheep. However, it was a very early symbol used for sheep. But recall the sheep token. The sheep token was a disc with a cross or plus sign inscribed on it. So the Sumerian symbol for sheep apparently directly became the Sumerian symbol for sheep used in writing. This gets us halfway through the token theory of the origin of writing. Next, we will examine how using these symbols, we got to the point where names could be written outside of an accounting system.